Hi, this is Kendallville TV, and we're at the Hayden Antique Motorcycle Rally. And we have a gentleman here with a nice bike. Can you tell me your name and about your bike? Uh, my name is Shane Randall. Um, this bike's a 78 Suzuki GS1000. It's uh, about 33 years old, and uh, my uncle bought it brand new. Uh, he rode it for a while, and it sat in a lawn shed for about 16 years. and. Uh, <laughs> So I got a hold of it in May of 2007 and uh, restored it. Uh, frames have been powder coated, uh, engine's been overhauled, has different carburetors on it, of course new tires and all the gaskets and rubber pieces and uh, it's the original paint, it's just been uh, wow. color sanded and a couple coats of clear put on it and uh, buffed out. So, mm -hmm. it's so the, cool. the seat's <clears throat> still the same? No, the seat's seat's different. So it looks a little different than a normal bike. Yeah, it's it's a little different. It it was modified when I got it, but uh -huh. uh, this is a different seat pan and uh, had a shop uh, put some new foam on it and a different seat cover. Um, turn signals are a little different. Uh, tried to keep it as close to as the way it was when he rode it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think the stock exhaust lasted on the bike for two weeks when he bought it new. So. Hi, I'm Kurt Hayden, Hayden Honda. We got a our annual uh, vintage bike sale bike show going on today. This is one of our Hayden Honda's bikes. Sold its gyro. Sold back in 86 for one year. We also have an old Honda Urban Express. That's a prelude to the scooters that we sell now. Plus about 35 other bikes sitting around that the locals brought out for everybody to look at. You don't see a basket on a bike like that much, do you? No, not anymore. We used to sell a lot of these. Mm -hmm. You still see a few of them being ridden around. Mm -hmm. And that gyro, that's a three-wheeler. Is yep. that kind of different? Yeah. They've made them for two years. Oh, wow. That moves funny. I mean, not funny in a yeah, bad way. Yeah, you go around a corner, you lean, but the engine and the wheels stay solid. Oh, my gosh. Do they make those anymore like yeah. that? Yeah, they only made them two years. Huh. And then you flip a lever up and it just sits there. <laughs> Name's uh, Mike Richter. It's a 1983 Kawasaki KZ1100. It's uh, had quite a few modifications done to it. The uh, when I bought it uh, used, the previous owner had already put a uh, different seat on it and had adapted a uh, Kawasaki Z1 tail to it from the mid 70s. Hmm. And I went through it and uh, redid the uh, paint on it. It was originally blue when I got it. I painted it the lime green metallic. And uh, the wheels had been uh, sandblasted, and were just bare aluminum. I painted those the, the black. I built a custom exhaust system for it, and rebuilt the carburetors, put different ignition on it, put uh, different handlebars, mirrors, uh, fly screen, new tires on it, and just kind of kind of redid a lot of things in the bike. And mm -hmm. and it's got about 17,000 on now miles, and everything seems to run good on it. And, been real happy with it and plan on keeping it forever. My name is Rich Morehouse. I'm from Alban, Indiana. Um, it started life off as a bone stock CB 650, a 76, or 550, sorry. Um, we've done some dimpling for the crankcases. Something a little different. Um, make out the pattern mm -hmm. on paper, transfer it on and then just take a eighth inch drill bit and just touch in and get the design set in and then I'll polish the cases, the covers, wherever I've done it. Um, the color is a Chevrolet turquoise. Mm -hmm. um, the emb the All the lettering is decals that we clear coated in. Um, the guy that did the overlays for the gauges, he had all the emblems custom made. It's a part that I found in Taiwan mm -hmm. that is something I had waited about three weeks for. I, I cannot find them anywhere in the U.S., so I kind of found, found it on eBay and what is waited. It? It's, that's the original, it's a headlight eyebrow. But it's got the, it's the only one I could find that had the vintage Honda emblem in it. My name's Scott Fortress. I'm, I'm here in Kenneville. Uh, it's a 1981 Honda Goldwing. Most people don't realize back then they necessarily weren't the full dresser bikes that they are now, that they originally were a standard bike. 
and then they kind of evolved into what you see for the gold wings today. Wow. But I took even more off from mine than what it originally had. It, I've, I've just got no fenders, front or rear. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a real low drag bar style handlebars. Uh, the engine has all been gone through. When I originally got the bike, I traded the guy a lawnmower for it. If you can imagine how rough a shape it was then. It was, it was a nasty, rusted bike. And two years of, of a lot of patience from my wife. This is in our garage. I had it scattered all over the garage and put it back together one piece at a time. The seat I made myself, the original seat was a lot larger and I took the actual frame without anything on it whatsoever and laid the fiberglass on right on the frame protected and then build up from there. So it's got a lot of padding where it needs it. Mm -hmm. But yet it's got a, a trim line that hopefully fits the frame a lot. I'm uh, Jim Townsend, and I'm the uh, on the board of directors of the Vintage Japanese Motorcycle Club of North America. But this is one of the first models that Honda started importing. Oh. And they have they had an advertising thing. You meet the nicest people on a Honda, and this is the mo the motorcycle that they imported and sold. But they sold thousands of these. In fact, they started making them in 1958, and they're still making them somewhere in Asia. <laughs> but they've sold millions and millions of these. Wow. <laughs> and not and not just this size, but they make some a little bit bigger. What do people like about these bikes? Why do they are they so popular? Well, you could you could ride them and not get dirty. That's one thing. <laughs> They didn't go very fast. They run just about 40 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. But uh, for riding around town, they were just perfect. It's kind is, of the forerunner of today's scooters and mopeds. Is that a one-stroke engine or more? <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's got a little single-cylinder four-stroke engine. Uh, a lot of the scooters and things today are two-cycle engines, which don't really hold up uh, as well as a four-stroke, but everything everything on it works, and uh, the new ones today all work. They're just great little machines. This, this gas tank probably holds a little less than a gallon, pretty close to a gallon, I guess. But uh, that's good enough to get you a couple hundred miles.